Uncle Joe, everybody's favorite no malarkey presidential nominee and Tyler Durden wannabe, is more than eager to be the President of the United States, even if that means beating up every voter in the process. The first rule of Fight Club is, you do not talk about Fight Club. No, I wish we were in high school, I could take him behind the gym. That's what I wish. The second rule of Fight Club is, you do not talk about Fight Club. I'd like to take him behind the bar. I'd love that. Like this. He's down, and he'll never get up. For this list, All Things Top 5 looks at the Top 5 Joe Biden fighting with voter moments that were caught on camera. And keep punching at it, and punching at it, and punching at it. Number 5. My IQ is higher than your IQ. In this oldie but goodie, Uncle Joe can be seen sparring with a New Hampshire voter who questioned his academic credentials. What law school did you attend, and where did you place in that class? And the other question oh, is, man. could you quickly... I, I think, we I, I, think I probably right have right a much higher IQ than you do, I suspect. I went to law school on a full academic scholarship, the only one in my, in my class uh, to have a full academic scholarship. In the first year in law school, I decided I didn't want to be in law school and ended up in the bottom two-thirds of my class and then decided I wanted to stay, went back to law school and in fact ended up in the top half of my class. I won the international moot court competition. I was the outstanding student in the political science department at the end of my year. I graduated with three degrees from undergraduate school and 165 credits, only need 123 credits, and I'd be delighted to sit down and compare my IQ to yours if you'd like, Frank. The problem with all this is that much of what Uncle Joe said was not true. Uncle Joe did not go on a full academic scholarship, but on a need-based scholarship. He graduated 76 in a class of 85 students, and as for the three degrees, it was actually two degrees. Uncle Joe acknowledged that he had lost his temper and said, I exaggerate when I'm angry, but I've never gone around telling people things that aren't true about me. On top of all this, Uncle Joe acknowledged that he had plagiarized a paper in his first year of law school. One of you has been accused of the worst crime a writer can commit. Plagiarism. The Washington Post ran the headline, Biden admits plagiarizing in law school, and six days later he announced that he was dropping out of the race. Number four, you're a damn liar, fatso. During a rally in Iowa, a voter questioned Uncle Joe's son, Hunter Biden, oh, and his role in the Ukrainian gas company Burisma. But you, on the other hand, sent your son over there. Get a job and work for a gas company, but he had no experience with gas or nothing. You're, you're selling access to the president just like he does. So you you're a damn liar, man. That's not true. In response to the allegation of selling access to the presidency, Uncle Joe defended himself by denying it challenging the voter to push-ups, a foot race, and once again an IQ test. And you want to check my shape on, let's do push-ups together here, man. Let's do, let's run. Let's do whatever you want to do. Let's take an IQ test. And now as Festivus rolls on, we come to the feats of strength. Not the feats of strength. After calling the man fat, which his campaign claims Uncle Joe said facts. But look, fat, look, here's the deal. Here's the deal. I'm not fat. I'm big boned. The Iowan voter got the last dig in by saying Uncle Joe didn't have any more backbone than Trump and that he's not voting for Uncle Joe. In a stunning lack of self-awareness, 77-year-old Uncle Joe then told the 83-year-old voter that he's too old to vote for him. It, it, looks, it looks like you, you don't have any more backbone than Trump does. Any other questions? Yeah, all right. I'm not voting for you. Well, I knew you weren't, man. You think I thought you'd stand up and vote for you? You're too old to vote for you. All right, here we go. You're too old, fat man. Your tits are too big. Get the f off my porch. Number three, you're full of <laughs> While touring an auto plant in Detroit, Uncle Joe had a testy exchange with a voter over gun rights. You are actively trying to diminish our Second Amendment right and take away our guns. You're full of all right, thank now, you shush. shush. Now you stay in the back and keep quiet, woman. I don't have time for your stupidity right now. I support the Second Amendment. Your voice, you said that you're taking the gun. Oh, he just clarified it. Wait, 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 wait. Hey, 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 hey
take the AR, your AR-14s and what? Okay, this is not okay. Hold on, hold on. All right. Hey, let's you know, go. Tell you know, there's a lot of guys. Hey, you're, a lot you're of guys want me, man. I'm hey, not hey, working. Hey, hey, hey. So Give me a break, break, man. Don't, Don't push, push, push it up on me. After the video came out, most people said the worst part of that exchange wasn't Uncle Joe wanting to take the voter outside or calling him a horse's ass, but him telling a voter that he was full of when the factory worker was asked about Uncle Joe's use of profanity, he responded by saying, You know, I, I'm kind of used to it in, in, the, in the workforce, and uh, as a politician, I can understand the way how things have gone. You're not supposed to use profanity, but in this day and age, it's a language. I'm not going to hate him for that. And I use it all the time. Most people use it all the time. We're assuming that Uncle Joe changed the name of his bus from the No Malarkey to the You're Full of shit Express. At least he's finally appealing to the youth vote. Number 2. Lying Dog-Faced Pony Soldier At a New Hampshire town hall, Uncle Joe took a female college student to task for fibbing about whether she had participated in a Democratic caucus. I was a Democratic caucus. You ever been to a caucus? No, you haven't. You're a lying dog-faced pony soldier. You said you were, but you're, you're, now you gotta be honest. I'm gonna be honest with you. By far the most common question raised by Uncle Joe's use of the phrase has been, what the hell is Joe Biden thinking calling a young woman dog face? Hey dog face, why don't you go eat some dog food and eat your own throw up because you're a dog face. But running a close second is, is there really a movie in which someone calls John Wayne hey, a lying dog face pony soldier? Uncle Joe offered some hints to the origins of this weird insult by saying it's a phrase from a John Wayne film. My brother who loves to use lines from movies, a John Wayne movie, where the Indian chief turns to John Wayne and says, this is a lion, dog face, pony soldier. In typical Uncle Joe fashion, he managed to get the actual quote wrong and quite possibly confused two movies into one. So here they are, the dog faced soldiers, the regulars, the 50 cents a day professionals riding the outposts of a nation. The pony soldier speaks with a tongue of the snake that rattles. This is standing bear who speaks with a forked tongue. I will deal with him. Lying dog-faced pony soldier might have become part of Joe Biden and his brother's private lexicon. Whether it was a great idea to use the phrase at a campaign event is another question entirely. For more awesome videos, remember to subscribe to All Things Top 5 and ring the bell to be notified for our latest videos. Number 1. Vote for someone else Uncle Joe has often chosen to respond with an unusual new campaign slogan when confronted by voters who disagree with him. Go vote for someone else. Uncle Joe told a high-profile activist in Iowa to go vote for someone else in a tense discussion that began to border on a physical confrontation. I'm going to support you if you win the nomination because we got to get rid of Trump. But what are we going to do about climate change? Now, you say, you say you're against pipelines, but then you want to replace these gas lines. That's not going to work. We can't, we, we got to stop building and replacing pipelines. We're going to go vote for someone else. All right, thanks so much, sir. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. I'm going to vote you in the general if you treat me. Yeah, I know. Well, can I have a picture of me? You're asking a picture of me. Come in and tell me you don't support me. No, no, no. My plan. Yeah, you did. You said you I said I will support you in the general. In the general. I'm looking for a primary. We're happy to get a member. That's what I'm looking for, okay? Just because we're trying to get You believe that Bernie can do something by 2030? I'm actually supporting Tom Steyer. The meeting started off fine, but Uncle Joe went full corn pop when Ed Fallon didn't agree to support him in the caucuses. And Corn Pop was a bad dude. And he ran a bunch of bad boys. You really expect me to not push you up against the wall, biatch? With a press of the chest, a poke of the finger, and a grab of the jacket with both hands, Uncle Joe exerted his dominance like a silverback gorilla choosing his mate. Ed Fallon may have gotten off easy. Other primates choose to attract a mate through unsolicited back rubs, awkward hugs, and unusual hair sniffing. Take your stinking paws off me, you damn dirty ape! Do you agree or disagree with our list? Is Uncle Joe fighting for every vote literally? Comment below and watch our other videos and subscribe to All Things Top 5.